Hey everybody, what's up? Sorry I've been slacking on my blogs. My bad. So this blog is going to be a two for one. One, two. So this is going to be a 13 week video and a 14 week video for a pregnancy update. So stay tuned. Let's get right into it. What's up? How y'all doing? So, this is my two for one special. One, two. So, this will be 13 weeks and 14 week blog. Yay! Woo woo. Woo woo. Hey, ho. So, okay. So, let's see what happened in 13 weeks, shall we? Alright, 13 weeks. Um, the symptoms are most the same. Um, that I had for 13 and a half for 14. Um, 13 weeks for me was a really let's go. I'm kind of glad I'm in the 13 weeks, you know. It was more, uh, yes, we're in the double digit, even on 12, you're in the you know, you hit 10, you're in a double digits, but you're like this close to find out what you're gonna have. So that was the um that was that bit, uh for for me. Um symptoms for me for 13 weeks um they kind of like died down. Um the only thing that really stood out for me for 13 weeks was the um was the uh what I was about to say I'm have a pregnancy brain. The pregnancy brain and a sciatica. That's what really um got out to me and stood out and everything else. And so that was the big thing for us that kind of just stood out in the symptoms. Um that was mostly about it about my symptoms. Um so and so I mean I felt great, I felt good. I thirteen weeks wasn't a really big difference for me but was a, sorry I'm sorry it was a big difference so that was the end of the symptoms for 13 weeks for me that was the end um for 13 weeks was a big milestone step for me um I felt oh I got to hear the baby's heartbeat so the um oh why is that I'm gonna do um in the Things. I'm going to give you a little clip, but I'm still going to say it when I do my gender um, videos. I think I'm not going to tape that tomorrow. Um, so, for me, we got to hear the baby's heartbeat. Yeah, we finally got to hear the baby's heartbeat on the Doppler. So, let me just say it was on the Doppler. That was the first time we got to hear it. Um, even though I went to a couple sonograms for the baby's heartbeat, we didn't get to hear it because they said that you can't do the heartbeat because of the rays from the little um, sonogram machine part can like 
it's louder than what a Doppler is, so it can irritate the baby. That's what she says. Excuse me. But we did got to hear it heartbeat, and my doctor said, "What does it sound? Does it sound like a a gabbling a gabbling horse, or does it sound like a washing machine?" She asked my husband. And he said, it sounds like a washing machine. She said, you might be having a little girl. A galloping horse sounds like a boy. And a uh, a washing machine like <laughs> sounds like a girl. So, hey, we never know. So, <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, let's see. What else happened for 13 weeks? That was it on that. Um, it was a great doctor visit. Very nice. Had a good time. Um, nothing, but that was it. So, let's move on to 14 weeks. So, 14 weeks was for me was a kind of like a transition stage for me because, um, in the symptom department, they were like, I was a little bit more tired this week, that week of the 14 weeks. Um, trying to get on the schedule, trying to get some sleep if I look tired now because I'm probably am. And it's probably like going on 12 o'clock at night and I'm just doing this video because I said, oh, I still didn't do it and I needed to do it. But, <laughs> so it was like more of a still sleeping thing. Um, my doctor told me that this is just for me because, well, my midwife, that I could take a, 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 a mild, um town of him. Please do not do that unless you talk to your physician or your midwife, please do not, I'm um, just putting a disclaimer out there, please don't do that, because everybody's different, um, to get some sleep, and also to, for help with my sciatica, so that's what the doctor told me, if, um, I, that I could do, sorry, um, back, uh, around my 14 week mark, um, so, yeah. And so that's what happened. That's one of my symptoms that it got real bad. My, I'm going to keep saying it again. It's got bad. I'm going to tell you how bad in a little bit. In a couple more minutes, that's how bad it got. Um, acne got a little bit worse at this stage. Um, I've been itching, getting it all over my back. It's been, it just flared up a lot this week um, at 14 weeks. So, um, dry skin, everything, and like with my girls, I was part. I really didn't have that problem with them. I was always too oily. That was just a different thing. Was sweaty, oily, all, all different kind of stuff. Um, food still to change, stayed the same. Um, I still like what I like, and I still don't want to like what I like. Um, only thing different sometimes if. I get a little bit more hungry than I do, and sometimes I don't, but that was it. Um, oh, I started noticing some. It was something that was different from, it could have been about 13 weeks that it's been starting to flare up, but I definitely knew that solid in 14 weeks was a little bit of water retention I started to see in my feet. Um, so... I kind of cut back on my water just a little bit just to see if it was that but um it's probably just me getting bigger so um with the baby um I did gain some weight so I did see that um I'm gonna say that's a symptom people won't um I think that was about it on my symptoms. So, let's just get in random talking. How did my week go for uh, 14 weeks? Well, I want to go see at 14 weeks. I don't know if I said this in my last previous video. If I did, I must be repeating myself. Uh, last previous video, I did get some good news. Um, I had to go see a high-risk doctor um, for my... Um, for my um, midwives because I did have a lot of issues when I was pregnant with my other two girls. Um, mostly with my first one, I had uh, uh, not preeclampsia, I had hypertensia. Um, I had to get um, NST scans done on my stomach, mostly with her. Um, had a C-section with my first one. With my second one, um, my blood pressure spiked a little bit, but that was it. Um, there was no protein in my urine with her like it was with my first one. And with my second one, 
just one time, but um, I didn't have a C-section. I had a VVAC with her, um, and I had NST skins with her. The only reason I had NST skins is because I was still overweight like I was with my first pregnancy, so they just did it anyway as a compression just to make sure that everything was okay. And, oh, sorry, because my blood pressure did go up a little bit, they just wanted to make sure the baby was fine, but she came naturally and she came on her own. I was in a uh, week label with her. So you're asking me why I'm telling you all this, so I'm getting to the point. So I went to go see the high-risk doctor just for the midwives to feel comfortable and see if the um if I'm okay to be in their care and I can't deliver in the center um where some people can because I have to deliver in the hospital because of my past so I got talked to him he asked me all the questions and stuff just to see that I would have been high risk um he said what really kind of saved me was losing 100 pounds and made me on high risk so he was very happy with that but he also told me some good news that he did some research for me. He had looked at my charts. Okay, so I don't know if I ever talked to this in my, my other couple of videos. A long time ago, when I was about, I think, 17, 18, I had a breast reduction done. Um, and they told my mom after surgery I had heavy bleeding from the breast reduction. And they told me they took my milk dud. So, as you know, what does milk dud do, ladies? They produce milk so you can breastfeed. So, I'm making a long story short. It all has to do with the same thing. Um, they told me that I couldn't breastfeed because they took my milk duds. Well, the doctor told me that's a lie. I said, what do you mean? He was like, you can breastfeed because you have your milk duds. The only way you can not breastfeed if you had a mastectomy done. And you didn't have a mastectomy done. You just had a breast reduction done. I was like, yeah, that is true. He said, even if they did decide this is coming from the doctor to take your milk does, they only could took a little bit because they can't get them all. So he was like, you never breastfeed the whole entire time? I said, no, because they told me that I couldn't. And so I just went like that. He was like, well, I said, and first of all, I never, I never felt the milk come out. I never produced it. I never leaked it. He's like, sometimes it doesn't work like that. Sometimes you have to latch your baby on and the milk will come down. And I never knew that. I never, ever, ever knew that. Um, nobody ever told me that. Um, so I kind of felt like after I left the doctor, I don't know, I was a little upset because after I left the doctor's office, I felt like. For two years, you know what I mean? Well, two of my kids, I lost the chance to breastfeed. You know, and a lot of people say it's a very, a very intimate and very, maybe intimate to our work, or a very good thing for you and your child, especially the milk is real good, but a very bonding, that's a better word, uh, for you and your child. So I just felt like I got gypped, you know what I mean? But... This is my last baby, so I don't try to breastfeed with this one. So I was really happy to get that news, so I'm going to try to breastfeed. Um, so with that appointment, and I was so tired because I had got off of work in the morning. And that's why I said I was going to finish what I said earlier in symptoms. Um, so after that visit, I felt good. I had called my mom. I had talked to her and told her what I, all the information, what I told her and she was like I wish that doctor would have never told me that and I was like yeah I know mom but that's after we left our appointment but um, my husband was happy to find out good information I was happy and so that's our plan to do for that um but he said that I would not have to see him unless something would change I would be a great candidate to be in the midwives and so um that was great that was a great visit and so, um, <clears throat> we really liked to visit. We had a good one and, you know, so, uh, I meant to mention, and I think it was my, uh, 13 week video. Uh, I, so I did all this work. So let me finish. I did all this work and guess what? My midwives were moving. They are staying office, but we're. I want to deliver I they're not gonna be able to deliver so uh, if I want to deliver at the hospital I want to deliver to it's I'll have to leave the midwife 
Starbucks and go see a regular physician and a regular OBGYN. And y'all know from my previous video of the horror story that I told you, the reason why I went to midwives. So, I was just a little bit upset. My husband was a little bit upset because he really liked them and really was cool with it and how laid back it was and now we have to it, I know what y'all would say you'll be like okay well, why don't you just go ahead and go to Jefferson um, Hospital that's the name of the hospital um, first of all it's a little bit too far um, and if we had an emergency situation it would be kind of hard for us to get there and plus for the family so uh, my family doesn't have cars so it would have been kind of hard so we really just talked and everything and we did just just decided because we like the hospital that we we're going to deliver at and we just decided just to stay there and just go find a new OB and not use that one in the practice and sorry so I got cut off on my last video so yeah uh we just, just decided to uh stay in the practice and find a different doctor um, that's in the same practice and we can deliver our babies at the same hospital. Um, we're a little bummed, but it'll be okay. So, <clears throat> I think that was it, but um, I'm trying to think before I ended this video if there was something else I was supposed to tell you. No, I think that was it. But anyway, um, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling healthy. I'm ready. Um, pretty soon I did. Oh, well, yeah, that's what I was about to say. I am going to do a video on gen, um, on a gender predicament um, testing. Um, I'm probably not going to do that one that you pee in a cup and if it turns like a certain color, I'm not going to do that one because I'm not spending $50 on that. So I'm probably going to do some old wise tales that I can just go ahead and buy at the store. So that should be coming soon because right around the corner on the 21st, we get to find out what we're going to have. So we're kind of happy in February. So we're kind of really happy about that. So I want you to stay tuned because hopefully I can get some video of it or, you know, maybe, maybe do something cute with the girls and and we can announce and that's when we will announce the baby's name so i meant to tell y'all that one um, so stay tuned watch those videos it's going to be really cool um oh and like a couple months down the line i will be doing a little slash baby haul of the stuff i did start to get right now and and then, you know, when the shower comes, I probably won't be able to videotape it, but maybe I hope try to get some of it in and make a little short clip and let y'all show y'all. So that should be coming soon and y'all should be like great. And what I'm also to so just letting y'all know and um stay tuned and watch those videos and everything will be okay and so oh before i end it you always know that i'm going to put my information of how the baby's grown and what your baby look like at the end of the videos so if you stay tuned you'll find out that information and i hope your moms are all having a good night and i will talk to you later um <music>